morning. You ready? I'm ready. Uh, you better be ready. I've got questions. Ready. <laughs> <laughs> I want to know about you away from the microphone. Okay. Like, I can't believe that that's all that there is to Lars Larson. No, it's not. So both your mom and dad were in the Navy. Yes. Right? Yes. And you were born in Taiwan. I was born in Taiwan. My mother was in the Navy from 1940 to 45 as a Navy nurse. There were some medical records that showed she, she and he probably had six or seven or eight, might have been nine misses uh, before they had me. And uh, Wait, wait, wait. So your mother had eight or nine miscarriages before she had you? And she was, uh, she was 40 or 41 years older than me, so she'd be 100 today if she were wow. still alive. You were 10 years old when your mother, your whole family, got into a car crash when a drunk driver hit you, and you helped rescue your mother from under this car. And she was underneath, not the wheels, but under the body of the car. And uh, my dad got out, and it was snowy, and we managed to either both a combination of him picking up the car and, and shoveling snow out. We pulled her out from under the car, and she died just a few hours, a couple of hours before uh, 1970. So it was, it was New Year's Eve. If your parents have raised you right, and despite my dad's flaws, my mom was a great mom, my dad was a good dad other than the drinking part, they had raised me right, and I thought the best way to make my mother proud of what I was going to do was not to curl up in a ball and fall apart. I took copious notes when I talked to Tina. Um, and we're here at Salty's along Marine Drive and the Columbia because she said this was your very first date. Very first date. All those more than 20 years ago. Yes. So how long were you dating before you actually got married? Uh, we dated for almost two years okay. uh, before we got married. Do you know what else I heard about you? What's that? The only place, I, I think it's safe to say the only place that you are a beta male is with Tina. Do you really want somebody who comes home every night and says, okay, this is the way it's going to be, and I'm going to run the conversation, and I'm going to run all the conversation. So when we're out with friends, I tend to, you know, even at home, but, but it, when I'm out with friends, I tend to step back a little bit to make sure that I'm not sort of the person who's always driving the conversation, controlling the conversation, and th that wouldn't be any fun to be around, not for a wife and certainly not for your friends. But what do you remember about the first date? Because I want to know what oh. you remember about your first date with All Tina, right. and then I'm going to tell you what she said. All right. What I remember is that we, we said we're going to go to brunch at Salty's on the Columbia, and, and it was, you know, it's a great place to have brunch, I mean, because it's a beautiful view, beautiful setting, and, uh, and so we came out here, and we sat down, and we just started talking. And we had brunch, of course, but we just talked, and we talked basically until they had Everybody else had left. <laughs> the whole place was empty, and we were all by ourselves. And I, five, six hours, you know, at least at least five hours that we sat and talked. Have you ever done an interview like this where people are just trying to keep you on you, on your personal life, on your backstory, on you know things that are not your job? Uh, not, not really. So it's kind of a first. It is a first. It's kind of a first. It's a first. Tell me something that people don't know about you. Wow. Uh, that they don't know about That they me. don't know about you. Huh. I like science fiction. Let's I've been go. coming here for 38 <laughs> years. This has always been my section. Let's see, J, K, L, um, H, no, it's the other way. This way? H is the other way. H, E, I is Heinlein. The guy's been gone for a long time, but he's written some of the best books in the genre, and that was the first one I read, The Moon is a Harsh Mistress. Give me the little Okay, thumbnail. the gist is that Earth has treated the moon like a penal colony, kind of like Australia was treated as a penal colony by the Brits. And they've shipped all the ne'er-do-wells and the political malcontents and everyone else has been shipped up there. They concoct a plan to declare their independence and it's modeled after the American independence story. Tina says, you've got a story for every place in Port Lyson. Thank you, that's what I was just gonna say. <laughs> you have a story for every place. This is why I find... <laughs> No, 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 you are such a horrid person. I'm taking you home. <laughs>